main issues first, uh, and then uh, give you some uh, some details. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so, so the main question is, you know, uh, what does it mean that a spacetime is singular? And if you recall, you know, there were the the singularity theorems by Penrose and Hawking from the middle 60s to the, uh, the mid of 70s, and, and they predicted the existence of uh, incognite geodesics in, in very generic setup. You know, in space times, which describe the, the expanding uh, universe, and, and uh, space times, which are modeling the collapse of, of stars, you know, realistic models. And, uh, what is really important that there were many people immediately felt uncomfortable because uh, they also assumed that you know some sort of violent thing will happen and curvature blow up or some some other uh, violences will will uh, come together with the existing singularity. Immediately there were suggestions to use alternative theories or quantized theory of gravity to get rid of this you know, in uncomfortable feeling. But uh, the question is whether we have any, you know, verification or proof that such a thing, you know, a curvature blow up will happen. And the answer is no, not at all. We, oh, you know, the, the, the singularity theorems, as they stand, they just predict the existence of incomplete causal geodesics. Yeah, okay. Because we know gravity in weak field region. Uh, what is uh, what else is merely our speculation. Yeah, yeah. The, but but let's uh, try to you know uh, start on this ground and and go ahead and and I I mean this whole talk is just to outline some thoughts about how one could uh, strengthen the conclusion of the singularity theorems. And I would like to emphasize at the very beginning that no attempts are going to be made to use alternative theories or some sort of quantized theory of gravity. I mean, this is com completely a classical uh, uh, differential geometry application stuff. So what we really know about space-time singularities, singularity is a synonym of incompleteness, as, as I mentioned that we, we just have this prediction. And if you think about, you know, how long does it take to, to realize that uh, the, even the Schwarzschild space-time, as it was introduced by Schwarzschild, is not complete, uh, was really understood on the long run by uh, showing that there are certain incompleteness. There are geodesics which are not extending to the arbitrary large parameter values. So incompleteness was also associated with that. But we expect that the incompleteness associated with the, with the uh, singularity theorems are some sort of different nature. But, you know, also one should admit immediately that if we have a space-time and we just remove a part of it, we can get immediately geodesically incomplete space-time and then, you know, there is nothing wrong along the geodesics, which are incomplete. So what is really, you know, uh, the, the, the way to, to express that uh, something violent should happen? I mean, this, this is the main issue. How, how one tried to, to, to show this? And, and the question is then there, and what is that meaning? I mean, uh, there were many attempts, a, f a flood of people, you know, uh, worked on the, the boundary construction, C boundary, B boundary, G boundary, the, the garage boundary. So, so the, there are plenty of candidates to, to make sense of, of, of there. And, and you know that the approach there, some topology should be defined there. But uh, okay, okay, just uh, let us pretend that the moment that we have something uh, for some miracle in a generic setup, that we, we can say that the, the, that the, a space-time is uh, guaranteed to be maximal, and it's somehow some sort of Cauchy development of regular data. And if you are old enough, you can recall a, a seminar 
theorem by Yvonne Choquet, Bruja, and, and uh, Bob Garroch from uh, 76, which guarantees that uh, we have a maximal Cauchy development. But what does it mean? I mean, maximal Cauchy development is, uh, you know, we have all those space times which are maximal Cauchy developments of certain data, Reisner Nordstrom or, or the Kerr uh, space time, and we have smooth Cauchy horizon and nothing wrong happens where we, you know, arrive to the, the boundary of the maximum Cauchy development. We can just carry on and continue the space-time. So uh, it's, it's, you know, it's getting uh, more and more clear that somehow we should rule out these special space-times and, and this is the way you, we invoke the, the cosmic, strong cosmic sense of hypothesis by Penrose. He, I mean, his uh, conjecture can be summarized that uh, a maximal globally hyperbolic, maximal globally hyperbolic developments of generic initial data are not part of larger space-time, so they cannot be extended. This is really important. So, so uh, just uh, you know, noticing this, uh, we, we can have some feeling how how one should uh, proceed and and build up some some sort of argument. If nothing hap you know, violent happens at the ideal endpoints, where, wh where is that point? We, we don't know at, at the moment. Uh, at ideal endpoints of incomplete uh, time-like geodesics, I, for definiteness, I just use time-like geodesics as an example, because this can be done also for large geodesics, but it's simpler to, to, to work with these. So if there is no violence showing up there, then there has to be an extension. And uh, if we, you know, somehow can use the, or refer to the strong cosmic sensor hypothesis, we could say that this is how we're not allowed to happen, to, that the space-time can be extended. So uh, if it is not possible, then, then something violent should happen along the, the geodesic or some geodesics surrounding the the distinguished or chosen one. So this this is the the ideal stuff we we, we would like to get uh, to to get to, you know a sort of strengthening of the statement of the singularity theorems of uh, Penrose and Hawking. Uh, what we have uh, by now is you know we, we record. Uh, Jose will talk about the pe Hawking Penrose singularity theorem in, in more details. You will know what does it mean to have this uh, incompleteness. We also have this very strong result by Yvonne and, and Bob uh, about the maximal existence of mas maximal Cauchy developments. We can re relay or use the, the strong cosmic sensor hypothesis. And now the question is, you know, how we can, or what sort of techniques we can use to extend a space-time. Because, uh, you know, the, the extension will be used to, to say that uh, the, the, the smaller space-time is part of a larger one. And uh, what do we do when we have just, you know, uh, R, R, Rn? And one can recall Images. I mean, we have a differential manifold locally. This is a, you know, uh, just just this this structure is in each point or each event have this neighborhood, and uh, one can recall that oh, uh, Whitney, very long time ago, has already started to investigate if we have a, a function uh, on R n, what is the guarantee that you know if uh, let we have a function on, on, on a compact subset of Rn. The question is, you know, how we can prove that there exists a, an extension, which is, you know, class of uh, CEM, such that its restriction on A is, is coinciding with the original function. But this yeah? Origin on F is continuous or? No, no, I, I think this, this uh, I f forgot to mention that this should be also uh, oh, CM. Yeah. Uh, and uh, actually, this question was uh, recently uh, answered by Pfefferman, but uh, uh, the, the, the basics are, are really worked out by, 
by uh, Whitney. You know, uh, this is very complicated. There are some property P which is uh, going to be satisfied by globally hyperbolic space times. Don't worry about that. The, the basic issue is that if we have a, a compact subset of Rn and we have a CM function on, on that, and we have a guarantee that you know all the derivatives continuously continues not only the, the this a but the closure, the, the the including the boundary you know it extends to the boundary such that all these derivatives will be continuous. Then we have an uh, a, 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 an extension to the complement, and this extension can be smooth, can be even analytic according to the result of of uh, uh, Whitney. So uh, let's try to, to, to turn back to the physical theory we have. So what, what we do really in, in this uh, setup? So just think about, we have a space time in, in the book of Hawking and Ellis. We, 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 we've learned, you know, at the very beginning <laughs> that uh, the space time is represented by a power, but, but, you know, there are equivalent representations. But let's say that, you know, we have a manifold with smooth paracompact, uh, I mean, which is smooth paracompact connected orientable, just to have, you know, all the structures we use to, to uh, you know, evaluate certain quantities on the, on the space time. And we, we have a smooth Lorentzian metric on that. I mean, I'm not going to use more no field equations, just this one. And what is the, I mean, this definition is also given in, in Hawking Ellis' book. The, the, what is the extension of a space time? If we have, you know, two space times of, of certain uh, smoothness class, I mean, it could be smooth or CM or whatever, X is a variable here. So uh, if we have a diffeomorphism, it may not be, you know, the same differentiability class for the metric and for the for the manifold. Let's assume that this is a, a smooth diffeomorphism between the 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 the, the space time m and, and its image in in m hat. So if if the you know there is a smooth diffeomorphism between the, the original space time manifold and, and its image such that the metric is carried on with this you know requirement that that the derivative of the of phi, the, the, the diffeomorphism, will give us the restriction of this metric, which is defined on a larger manifold, uh, uh, exactly. Then we say that uh, if this this phi m is really a proper subset of m hat, then we have an extension. This is the definition. So uh, the question is then. Do we really want, and, and what we really want to extend? I mean, uh, the space-time is tacitly assumed. This was puzzling, you know, for the long time, everybody. The space-time is uh, tacitly was assumed always to represent all the events compatible with the physical arrangement of. What we would like to describe in a given space-time. So, if we extend the space-time, we, we also should be very careful not using boundary constructions or any artificial, you know, uh, structures which are uh, associated. Use the simplest possible, you know, available mathematical tools. Sometimes smoothness is also assumed for the metric and, and, the, and, and the manifold just for mathematical conveniences. But uh, do we need really smoothness? I mean, just think about it. On physical grounds, grounds uh, it's really uh, reasonable to allow metrics, at least metrics, which are less well-behaved than smooth, smooth, and, and 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 the wider class of the metrics we allow to enter to the you know discussions, the 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 higher is the variety of matter fields we can describe. So uh, the question is then, what is suitable to be used here? And uh, from this point of view. I would like to mention that smoothness or, you know, CK for some K greater than or equal to two may be too much to require. Let's lower the, the, the most uh, in a reasonable way. And we can refer now uh, a result by Garuch and, and Russian from 87. They investigated the question, you know, if I am given a, a metric, uh, how can I make sense of the, the Einstein's equations? 
if the metric is the, the, the you know, less differentiable, and they ended up with this you know, claim. Uh, there are certain metrics which are called to be uh, regular. If the metric is locally bounded, if the inverse is also locally bounded, and if we have weak first uh, you know, derivatives of the metric which are locally square integrable, then we, we, we have the opportunity to define Einstein's equations at least as distributions. It makes sense. It's, it's highly non-trivial, the, the result. Just think about, you know, we have products of gammas, which contains derivatives here, so, so it's, it's a, a derivative of, of gamma. So, so it's really something uh, remarkable beyond this. But uh, this is too rough. What about if we have C0? They investigated this issue also. Then they showed that you know when we have a continuous regular metric, I mean, in addition to this, we, we assume that the metric is continuous, then we can have uh, you know, sequences of smooth metrics ap approaching to, to, the, to the continuous one, such that even the, the curvature tensor, tensors uh, as a sequence we, will com converge to the curvature tensor of the continuous regular metric. So this is great, but uh, you know this is still. I mean, even uh, when we have continuous metric, continuous regular metrics may still be too rough for for our purposes. And uh, but we shouldn't forget that you know the the wider the class of the metrics we we allow is the is the wider the the class of matter sources we can uh, have in, in in our setup. And uh, just to, to remind you, so Gerroch and Trashen had this uh, regular matrix, then this, uh, the continuous regular matrix, and uh, the, the suggestion is to use uh, this compromise that we use locally leaf sheets. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit more. I, I should put here also Gerroch Trashen regular to, to have you know at least distributional sense. The 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 uh, what is this? The 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 Einstein's equations. Uh, this class of spacetimes is used, I mean, can be used to describe gravitational shock waves, thin mass shells. This is also a favorite subject by Huan. And, and you know, various uh, non trivial stuff can happen in this class of metrics. And on top of this, you know, this, this uh, local lifshiftness allows immediately to have uniqueness of geodesics. Uh, you, you know, the, the equations can be integrated as ordinary dif differential equations locally. And uh, how now? Okay. Uh, uh, okay. I'll just uh, uh, remark that, for instance, for a uh, uh, matter shell, only a part of uh, derivatives of the metric is supposed to be continuous because other uh, other uh, continuity is uh, just a gauge condition. Yeah, but you, you may have you know uh, infinitely uh, many shares in, in if, if you if you would like to, to make your life to be trouble, troublesome. But how how then the, an anticipated result should look like <coughs> and. I would say that you know uh, use a, a generic maximal glo maximally globally hyperbolic spacetime with a, which is time like geodesic incomplete and the metric is of C uh, I mean locally Lifshitz and Gerroch Trashen regular. Assume that the cosmic sense of hypothesis holds for this class of spacetimes and denote by gamma uh, one of the incomplete time like geodesics. Then uh, I put here the, the main statement in, in both ways. Then the tidal force components of the curvature tensor cannot be bounded. This is the, the claim. But uh, what does it mean, components? I mean, with respect to what? And, and one has to, you know, measure with respect to parallelly propagated frame fields uh, defined along a synchronized three parameter family of time like geodesics surrounding the, the or ruling a neighborhood of a final segment of gamma. I, I will try to, to show you uh, just in, in some uh, very simple s uh, things about uh, this construction, I mean, in the last five minutes. Uh, and uh, I would like to point, if, if you are interested in the smooth setup, there are some results uh, with some gaps in time 
And I still owe, in, in the first paper, I, I promised three. The third is, is going to be a, a write-up of this talk. Uh, so how do we deconstruct this, this space-time extension? So let's choose a, 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 a time-like geodesic gamma and the segment of a finer segment of that. In here, there is something which I don't know the structure, the singularity. And, and choose first the neighborhood of this uh, finer segment and, and, and choose in this neighborhood a submanifold with boundary. And I will construct this later. And, and the, the ideal stuff would be if we, if we have you know, uh, a single coordinate patch covering this neighborhood U, uh, we could refer to, to the result of Whitney and then extend the, 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 the functions, the components of the metric with respect to some coordinates. Uh, and then we, we could say that, okay, we have a, an extension and, and, we, and when we have an extension in the second step, we have this extension, we just glue back to, to here. Uh, this can be made some factor space, uh, uh, using factor space and, and you know, accurate mathematical definition. But take these two space times and then glue their, them to, their, their together at, at their common part. And that, that is the way we get, you know, as a larger space time, at least here, we have a continuation of the geodesic. If it is, you know, uh, allowed to be done, the, the question is whether the, we can do this in, in general. And, and the metric, you know, induced on this larger manifold is just coming from this, these two ones. It's immediately given. So how do we do, you know, produce uh, the, the, the required uh, neighborhood U uh, and, and how we extend this metric? This is the, the main issue. But, but still, uh, the curvature will, will be, the component of R will be... I, I, will, I will tell you immediately. So, so uh, if, if the curvature is blowing up, we don't expect to have a, an extension. So let's use some sort of indirect proof. Assume that the curvature is, is not, not uh, blowing up, but we have the strong cosmic sense of hypothesis on, on the other, sense, sense, uh, other hand, so, so we, 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 we have sort of maximality. If the, if the curvature tensor does not blow up, then we have an extension. The existence of an extension is contradictory to the assumption that, that we, we have no a larger space-time which contains the original one as a part. So this is the basic uh, essence of the, of the argument. And, you know, we have this gamma. We have the tangent vector of gamma with respect to some affine parametrization. We can talk about, you know, this is a unit vector. We can talk about the tangent space uh, in a part of the tangent space which is orthogonal uh, to this. One can generate by the exponential map in a neighborhood a surface which is transverse to this and then extend in a you know, uh, smooth way. If the manifold is smooth, we can s pretend, you know, is extend V to be a vector field everywhere on sigma in a neighborhood and then start to consider the, all these geodesics in, in that neighborhood. And, the, you know, these geodesics are going to be, if, if they are, you know, all unit vector tangent here, you, you start them on sigma and, and then consider this three-parameter family of geodesic. These are synchronized in, in the se sense that the affine parametrization could, could be chosen, you know, zero here for everyone, and then, or T zero there, and then keep them uh, running along, along these geodesics. So, so this is the three-parameter family of synchronized uh, time-like geodesics, and, and U is expected to be ruled by, by these geodesics. How long from this, you know, intersection uh, this this uh, uh, construction will you know be reliable. It's a question, and and the answer is that in a generic space time, the components when when the components of the of the of the curvature tensor, the tidal force components, because we have you know v v here and and some other tetrad vectors or uh, frame vectors because we we could have higher dimensions, uh, so. <coughs> But now, now we are in three dimensions, so, so we have you know, three more uh, vectors here. So when, when, these, uh, when these curvature tensor components stay, parallel propagate, stay bounded in parallel propagated orthonormal frames, 
which can also be defined here. You know, choose one frame at, at this point, parallel propagate al along the geodesics which are generating sigma, and then parallel propagate that frame along the, the time-lapse geodesics. Then you get a synchronized, you know, parallelly propagated uh, set of orthonormal frames. So when, when this is uh, given and, and, and this, these you know, components are bounded, then we know that you know, a final segment up to the ideal endpoint of gamma will be included in U. And in addition, you know, the final segments of some others comprising this uh, capital gamma uh, uh, three parameter family will also stay in that neighborhood and there will be no conjugate points uh, developing along along this just by you know assuming that these quant quantities are finite and uh, in addition we can also introduce some sort of Gaussian R coordinate system in this neighborhood I mean this this is uh, something very very important and and if we you know look at this image of, of that guy by this some diffeomorphism we have it here R3 uh, or no R4 we have three dimensions here and, and, and the force here so we, we can now use witness theorem to extend the, the, the components of the metric what components the you know the, these components which uh, are not trivial the, the, these are depending on T and, and you know all the coordinates, but, but this is a three by three pos positive definite matrix. So use with this theorem, prove the extendability of, of, of the functions, on the, on the extendability of functions. What we need to prove is if we start with a you know, C1 class uh, metric, uh, it has an extension, which is also C1 minus um, local Lipschitz. If the components of this three by three matrix are guaranteed to be leaf sheets on the boundary, on the, on the closure of the image of this set which we, we selected. And uh, this can be done, I mean, uh, this can be proven to, to happen if the T derivatives, you know, T is the fine parameter along the geodesics, if the T derivatives of this, this metric which is given by this uh, funny formula and then has this structure is guaranteed to be uniform bounded along the along these mem members and again you know th this is I mean this is these are the, the frame I mean the the coordinate frame vectors I, I will finish I mean I have no more slide just to <laughs> so uh, we have this uh, coordinate ba basis fields and they satisfy the the Jacobi equation along uh, each of these geodesics. And, and then, you know, uh, using this fact, one can show that, that certain norm of this discovery and derivatives and, and the vectors themselves will be bounded if the tidal force ten tensor components of the curvature tensor is bounded. And, and this is, you know, closing up the, the, the argument, you know, Combining all these observations, we can say that in a generic globally hyperbolic space times, uh, of course we assume the, the, the validity of the, some sort of version of the strong cosmic sensor hypothesis, the incomplete space, in an incomplete space time, geodesically, time like geodesically incomplete space time, the tidal force tensor components tensor uh, should blow up, cannot be bounded, as they measured by synchronized observers. I mean, this is, this is the main sense that we are referring to frame fields, which are parallelly propagated along this family of geodesics. And what are these? I mean, what is the frame field? You know, the, the corner, you have this axis uh, of this room. And, and we have the, the, the always some sort of, all the measurements are made by observers with respect to some reference frame. And, and we, we did use this. Thanks a lot for your attention. <laughs>